What happens when you protest strewn across, 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 across a major highway? Well, it could be worse than you think. Easy for me to say, across, 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 across. Welcome into uh, my state of mind. I am Dan York, and I'm as punchy as anybody is with this snow. It's unbelievable. And then you add this incredible single-digit cold, and you just start praying that there's a spring coming. But it is, it is. Thanks for joining me. It's nice to have you. State Senator Lou Raptakis is my guest this evening. You're saying, wasn't he on last night, Dan? Yeah, for a couple of minutes, because we had so much to do. There were so many news items to touch base on. Then we had to get into the whole football thing and the Patriots and the Super Bowl and Pete Carroll and Tom Brady and Malcolm Butler and all that. Um, so that I only, I, I spent a few minutes with Senator Raptekis on a couple of things that he actually didn't come to the studio for. He came to the studio to talk about his legislation, which is designed to jack up the penalty to felony for those knuckleheads that decide that they're going to, you know, lay across a highway, a major interstate highway. Uh, we're doing what we can to bring on people who actually think that's a smart idea and in the Selma tradition. Uh, we'll let you know when that happens. In the meantime, we shall visit that conversation with Lou Reptakis, which I actually recorded yesterday afternoon momentarily. In the meantime, let us check the rundown and see what's going on. Uh, you can't trust these guys to throw them. We'll talk about the latest ISIS caper. Uh, talk about a gratuitous add a girl that came from the governor for the Ed Commissioner yesterday. And the timing is, well, special. That's what I was driving when I left here yesterday. That's the speed. And you know what? When it's snowing, what do you expect? I'll elaborate. What else do we have here, Laura? Yeah, there's a parade tomorrow for your Patriots, Patriots Nation. But there's a caveat. There's something you cannot do. And let's check in with your state of mind as well. All right. So uh, under the category of timing question, uh, it looks like these guys from ISIS are just not as smart as they, as they think they are. Here's the headline. Yeah, all right. So, I mean, it's disgusting. And so is this CBS video that I'm going to show you here in a second. Remember that this was all about, um, you know, trading the Jordanian pilot for one of theirs, you know, the woman who walked in the bomber who didn't pull the jacket right or it didn't work. Uh, they wanted a fair trade. And then, of course, they wanted $2 million from Japan for the journalist that they already killed. Um, but I think the Jordanians snuffed them out. The latest video from ISIS militants purports to show the execution of 26-year-old Jordanian pilot Moaz al Kasasbe. In the 20-minute video, the pilot appears to be burned to death. Al Kasasbe was captured in December when his F-16 crashed in Syria. ISIS tried to use the pilot as leverage to gain the release of a female attempted suicide bomber on death row in Jordan. Jordanian authorities said they needed proof their pilot was still alive. It's unclear when the latest video was made, but it comes just three days after the purported beheading of Japanese journalist Kenji Goto. Well, the Jordanians are saying that this actually happened. Now, you know, who, who are you going to trust? You want to trust the Jordanian government. Doesn't mean that they're not playing around with the truth themselves. But we'll see if we get any corroborating evidence here over the next few news cycles that, in fact, this poor pilot was actually killed well before the ISIS deal making went on. The Jordanian government was saying, uh, You show us that he's alive, you give us the proof that he's still with us, we'll start talking to you about a hostage exchange. Uh, timing questions all around this thing, but uh, we'll see. It, it's, it, as I said in the past, uh, the only good news is that they're running out of hostages. What their next tactic will be, anybody's guess. All right, coming back home here, the, uh, the headline has been uh, fairly predictable for quite some time. Dr. Deborah Giss, superintendent of schools in Tulsa, I guess. Six years, the Ed Commissioner here in Rhode Island, and I think, um, while not flawless, who is a pretty good change agent for the right kind of conversations that we ought to be having here. There was a lot of politics involved in whether or not she was going to be able to last past this gubernatorial election. 
Governor Gina Raimondo made some promises during the general election campaign to kind of get the education union's offer back and for them to offer some at least tacit approval. And I'm absolutely certain, based on communications and sources and background conversations that I've had, that one of the prerequisites for that was that Deb Gist had to go. Yesterday morning on the WPO Morning News, the governor applauded Deb Gist. Well, first of all, I think she's done an excellent job, and we have to thank her for her service. And secondly, this is a very special opportunity for her. Tulsa's her hometown. So if she, if she does get the job, I think it's too good for her to refuse. And, you know, we will, we will wish her well and thank her so much for all she's done for us. It's like a big whew, right? This is a serendipitous development because Deb Gist gets to go to her hometown and practice her wares in a district that's double the size of Providence. And Governor Raimondo gets a chance to sidestep the difficult public decision of not renewing or being involved in the renewing of the commissioner based on the political deals that she has made. The big question for us will be, are we going to get the right kind of change agent to keep the change moving? Time will tell. Not a good day. I'm sure we'll have Commissioner Gisson here before she's done. Her contract runs through June. Just wanted to mention, as I drove out of here yesterday, I drove into the snowstorm, and what is usually a half an hour ride home was an hour. I called home and said, hey, I'll be a, another half hour because it feels like it's slow going. I was listening to radio calls to, you know, my home station of WPRO in the afternoon as I'm driving back and people are, oh my gosh, it's 30 miles an hour. You know, they did a better job in the blizzard. By the way, the temperature was changing. The surfaces of the road were changing. Um, it was snowing like, the, you know what, uh, absolutely freezing. I understand when there's a couple of inches of snow, even on a highway, and I got to go slow down. I don't. You guys have got to relax a little bit. I'm not a champion of the DOT just because I'm an apologist, but sometimes you got to be a little realistic about it. And somebody very smart said to me in this building who you know, plows, they said, you know, everyone's comparing this with the blizzard. How great their job on the blizzard. Nobody was on the road during the blizzard. You don't even know how bad those roads were during the blizzard because by law you weren't allowed to be out there. Just a thought. Relax. Everyone's a little testy. All right, duck boat parade, duck boat parade. The champions will come parading down from the Prue Center to City Hall in Boston. It was postponed today because of the snow. Here's what the mayor had to say. The weather will be warmer, but we're still asking people to make sure you dress appropriately for it uh, because you'll be standing out in the street. I'm asking you not to go on snowbanks. The police department will be out there enforcing that you do not climb on snow banks to watch the parade. We're also going to have other city officials out there uh, insisting that you do not go on the banks because it's very dangerous. We don't want any situations because as, a, as the day gets warmer tomorrow, the snow is not as strong as as solid as it is today. Uh, so we're concerned about that. I appreciate that, Mayor. Good luck with the parade. I'm sure it'll be a big party. Uh, what's the chances that nobody's going to be on the snow banks? Ladies? Slim to none. Slim to none. Jess says, I'd be on a snowbank if I could get there, but she's got to work. Um, careful on the snowbanks that you're not supposed to be on tomorrow. And finally, your state of mind. This is how you get in touch with us. 228-1886, email, Facebook post, all that. We have a viewer tweet, I think, here. I wish Ms. Gist the best of luck. Facebook, anyway. Congratulate her on escaping Rhode Island's downward spile. A bittersweet message, don't you think? Well, I congratulate her, too and I hope we're not on a spiral. Senator Raptakis in a conversation we had yesterday about protesting on the highways next. So as advertised, it's time now to have a conversation with State Senator Lou Raptakis about his proposed legislation regarding the, you know, uh, well-meaning people <coughs> who decided that they're gonna put themselves across an interstate highway in all effort to what? Protest Ferguson, Staten Island, and suggest that Black Lives Matter? Please, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, again, Lou was uh, here yesterday for a segment. We kind of ran short, hit to a couple different fields, but his original invite, that's why he's still wearing the same suit, he's worried about that. This conversation you're watching right now, taped Monday in the snow, you're seeing it Tuesday night. Um, so, weirdly, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
when the Boston protests happened on 93, I said on the radio, there ought to be another law. Immediately, two Massachusetts legislators put in upgraded penalty legislation, and you were only hours behind, meaning you must have been thinking about it, to upgrade this kind of activity from a misdemeanor to a felony. Give me your broad concept as to why you think this should happen. Well, it's a very important issue, Dan. It happened in Providence maybe about three weeks prior right. to that. Even though it wasn't four to five hours long, it was about 20 to 30 minutes. Problem here, we have a serious issue. Uh, we have a group of protesters that are taking up a cause, but at the same time, they're deciding how to protest, when to protest, and, and how and when and where, but without taking any responsibility. There's a responsibility when you do protest, especially, look, I'm for uh, First Amendment rights and freedom of speech, but you just don't go overboard. We don't yell bomb on a plane at 35,000 feet. We don't yell fire in a crowded theater, and we don't walk into a, a bank and say, bank robbery, because there's a lot of consequences involved. You can injure people. People can have uh, a heart attack. I mean, uh, you just can't do these type of things. How about when you have a rescue? Uh, a, ta a woman who's pregnant, has a difficult pre uh, pregnancy, being rushed to Rhode Island Hospital, women and infants, and because of protesting or a blockage of the highway, they don't get there in time. The, w the uh, mother's uh, life is at risk. The unborn baby could be at risk. Someone has a heart attack. They're being rushed in seconds. We know today it's seconds, minutes, that could determine the safety of an individual. Uh, commerce, interstate commerce, we saw that during a blizzard, what are the first roads? The most important arteries of this state are Route 95, I-95, 295. Very important that we have to send a strong message. You cannot, anytime you decide what occurred up in Boston, even in Providence, that you block our federal highways, state highways, and cause mayhem. All right, so you're getting, you're getting some pushback. I mean, here are a couple of different, uh, there's a couple of different headlines that we have here. Uh, one is uh, Steve Alquist's uh, headline, I think, that was in the paper, Felony for Blocking Roads on American, and then the latest came from lawyer Shana Kurland, who, uh, and both, both of these folks are going to be invited here on the broadcast to explain more of, uh, of what they're thinking about what Senator Raptakis wants to do. Their whole thing is, look, the Selma tradition, uh, mm -hmm. there was court-ordered protection for this. But I go back to the Selma tapes and I see people walking, not strewn and tying themselves to cans across an interstate highway. And by the way, lanes were open or a half a lane was open. In other words, if emergency vehicles were trying to get past the Selma march, a march versus laying across the sure. highway, I, right? I mean, I don't see the comparisons, and I don't think a judge would authorize this uh, as, 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 as a rightful, peaceful protest. Sure. And their argument is that, look, highways are blocked uh, during accidents, during snowstorms. Those aren't premeditated. Your protest is a premeditated act, and you're blocking a, a, a st an important artery of the state that you can jeopardize someone's life, plain and simple. And, and that's why you have to treat it not like a misdemeanor, a felony. And look, we have many laws in the books, felonies, uh, assault and battery, uh, second time shoplifting is a felony, uh, writing a bad check intentionally is a felony, drunk driving, third offense is a felony, but if there's bodily injury, death resulting, it's a felony. Because I know those were some of the arguments they came up with. Well, the arguments are also, oh boy, so a young person who's, you know, vigilant and purposeful and sincere and exercises First Amendment. Uh, options here, charged with a felony, now will have that wrapped around their resume neck for the rest of their lives. And the outcome? They have to take responsibility for what they're doing. Look, you can protest. There's hundreds of venues to protest. You can protest in front of the state capitol. You can protest anywhere. But why are you doing it in, a, in an area where you are jeopardizing the public? You're jeopardizing someone else. You know, the problem, Dan, here is also when they do these type of things, protesting on I-93, I-95, they're losing their purpose, their focus. They're focusing on an issue, and they're angering the public, and plus putting the public in jeopardy. Well, it's funny. I, mean, you, I couldn't agree more. I, I, I can't remember ever having somebody tell me that they remembered why they were doing it. It's just that they did it. 
But that's on them. You, it's not for you to legislate, uh, you know, running a bad play, a la Pete Carroll. You know, it's like they run their play. It fails. It doesn't serve their purpose. It's not for you to legislate whether or not they should exercise the First Amendment effectively. It absolutely is within your purview, I think, to suggest that the penalties ought to be tougher. You know what we should do? We'll pause here. We'll come back. We'll talk about what kind of penalties uh, Lou's actually talking about. Uh, and then talk about what highways ought to really be protected. Stay with us. Yes, some of the, uh, the joy. That, of course, was on uh, 95 in Providence. And, of course, we've showed you 93 in Boston to... Two protests, you know, thankfully it's a little chilly out there right now, and maybe not such a great move for, for folks who, you know, want to make a point about equity and, you know, racial discrimination when it comes to law enforcement and all of that, because those messages seemingly have been lost when you jam up the highways the way they have. And State Senator Lou Rappakis has drafted a bill along with State Representative Raymond Hull, who, by the way, is an African-American police officer, uh, Credible in terms of, of his approach, and both of you have introduced this legislation in uh, in your respective houses. You had a lot of co-signatures on the Senate side, correct? About 28 signatures out of 38. Does that bode well for you? Absolutely. Does the Senate President bless this? Oh, we're going to go through the committee process. Have uh, you talked with her about it? Occasionally. Any, have you, well, what is she telling you? Well, it goes through the committee process. Oh, please. She allows the chairman to make the. Uh, Make the decision. Okay, and whatever. My and colleagues what, and on what the about Mattiello? Committee. Have you heard what he thinks on the House side? Uh, not yet. All right. But let's talk about what you want to do. You want to take the, the, this, this from a misdemeanor activity. Right now we have state law that allows for people to, to actually be whacked for a misdemeanor for, for high, high, high streets. That's right? It's, it says streets what? It, it, uh, any, any streets, highways, uh, sidewalks. Highway or block, street right, right. blockage. Right. You want to make this, we'll talk about the kind of highways first, but tell me what kind of upgrade here. We're talking about a felony then takes this thing from misdemeanor to something that will be on your record and could get you up to a year first time, right? Correct. Correct. It's a, a felony is a year. You have to serve one year. But then we're going to allow but the judge's judge, discretion. Absolutely. Right, we have a minimum of at least 60 days. I have to serve 60 days. But look, the bill's going to be ironed out through the committee process. We're going to hear testimony in favor against. We have the uh, many members of law enforcement are supporting the bill. Uh, public safety, fire and rescue personnel are supporting the bill, and we're going to take it step at a step at a time. Hear the differences, hear the arguments, and craft all these bills. They don't go in and come out in the original form. They're either sub A, sub A twice, three times, but basically, message is it's a serious crime. We're going to treat it that way. Judge's discretion on the penalties. Look, judge can say six months, uh, three months home confinement, whatever the case may be. We're allowed the judiciary you to You also put it a caveat, if I, if I saw your original draft and read it correctly, that if something happens, life or death, that can be uh, reasonably demonstrated Absolutely. to have happened because of one of these protests, it's even a stiffer penalty, correct? Exactly. That really is going to be treated as serious uh, uh, bodily injury, uh, death resulting. We're going to treat it seriously. If you want to be irresponsible to protest on a highway, like we said, Someone can lose their life being transported to a highway. They can cause an accident. Right. Members of public... So, so uh, talk to me about what roads. Because what, what, well, I think all streets and even all state highways, which is what you originally drafted, I think that's a reach. Right. We've changed so you've the changed bill. it. Changed the bill to highways. And what, what I like to do is focus on the major arteries, 95, I-95, 295, the overpasses, off-ramps, on-ramps, and basically any highway. I'll give you a good example, 146, which uh, either leaves the city of Providence, comes into the city of Providence, Route 4, those major arteries. Look, we don't want to focus on, on Route 6. Well, route, which four. Is uh, route 4. Route 4 coming off 95, uh, the split, where you head south toward URI. Okay, because if you get caught there. You could block up 95 again. It, that's a oh, road so that's specific to that right. 495 merge exactly. right We're there. We're going to be very careful. We're going to speak to DOT. 195. Coming in to the state, leaving the state. You have six, I-95. Six closer to the city, but not right. six in situ, that exactly. kind of thing. You have the 295 belt. You have uh, I-95, Route 6 from 295. So this will literally be road map specific. Sure. Absolutely. How ridiculous is it? Don't you feel, I mean, I, I, you have listen, to I, I support your effort here, but you got to feel like this is a really dumb exercise 
that you have to literally take out your map and start saying you can't do it here, you can't do it here, you can't do it here, you can't do it here. My goodness. Yeah. And basically, it's it's the roads that are going to be very important to, again, public safety, commerce. Uh, we just got to be very careful. These are going to be interesting hearings. Oh, there's going to be a. Uh, uh, a very large turnout. What do you think the timetable will be for this to be heard and voted upon? Basically, we'll try to have uh, hearings maybe toward the end of February. Uh, again, uh, the, these bills travel at a snail's pace. Uh, amendments, changing the bill, getting agreements from both. Don't forget, uh, House has to agree with the Senate version. Senate version has to be agree with the House version. Um, and what about the governor's spot? Have you heard from her? Well, not yet. Uh, Basically, we're going to speak to everyone. We're going to talk to uh, state police. We're going to talk to local police departments, uh, public safety, DOT, okay. uh, judiciary, and, and get feedback from everyone right. and craft a very good bill. All right. Well, come back when we know we've got progress. I'm glad somebody stepped up. Somebody's got to do something about this. Good work. Thanks. Thank you. State Senator Lou Reptakis. One more thought. Stay with us. By the way, Nice gesture by Tom Brady. He's going to have Malcolm. Isn't that nice? Brady, Brady is so class. And that kid Butler deserves it. Uh, what an effort. What preparation. Scott Avedesian, the mayor of Warwick, tomorrow night, 7.30 and 11.30. I'll see you at noon on WPRO tonight.